a couple of months back, just immediately after the elections, I met two friends of mine who are very, very senior people, who've worked in very senior positions in government. One was actually in the senior provision administration, and one had worked in the office of a former president. And I knew they were not on the Kenya Kwanza side. But the one thing they told me immediately we sat down was, Mashimiwa, now we all have to circle our wagons and help Rigadi Gashawa. He must succeed. And I, and I told them, what do you mean? He said, yeah, Rigadi is the senior most Kikuyu in this government. And if he fails, we all fail. If he succeeds, we succeed. He's the person we are now going to have to protect and help because he's the one who's taking care of the interests of the Kikuyu community. And I remember telling them, I can hear you with my head, but I cannot hear you with my heart. I know what you're saying, I can understand it, but my heart is refusing. And I know a lot of people are like that. You know what I am saying. You can understand it in your mind, but you don't want to. You, you're like, no, this can't be it. Rigadi Gashagwa is the senior most Kikuyu we have in this government. For the next four years, God willing, he is going to determine whether the Kikuyu community moves forward or whether it fails. And let me tell you something. If Rigadi failed as a deputy president, that failure will be pushed down to the entire community. And this is why I say that. The other day he stood up and he said, Maudu ni matatu. That as far as he's concerned, he wants to work with three things. He wants to deal with the issue of coffee, he wants to deal with the issue of tea, he wants to deal with the issue of milk. There are people who made noise everywhere. They say, oh no, you, you are your deputy president for the whole country. True. But you come from somewhere. And if the people where you come from don't embrace you in Kenya's politics, you fail. Today, Rigadi Gashagwa is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya because he's a Kikuyu. Had he been any other community, he would not have been given that position. He was given that position because Ruton required somebody who could mobilize the Kikuyu community to his side. His power and his relevance in this government is because he has to sustain that position. If today the Kikuyu community rejected him, and Ruto got to know that the Kikuyu community has rejected Rigadi Gashagwa, that would be the end of him. Unfortunately, even if we chose to reject him and he's, he becomes irrelevant, what will happen is that first he will not be replaced with somebody else from uh, the Kikuyu community. Secondly, the fact that it has already happened to him can easily happen to somebody else. So I want to urge members of our community, and I know I'm going to sound completely like a Kikuyu chauvinist here, and I make no apologies. Every community is building a leader to marshal and provide political direction. As Kikuyus, we are struggling. We are struggling because we had Uhuru Kenyatta, who left, and we don't want to actually accept that he has left. But he has left. He really is not in power anymore. We have Rigadi Gashagwa, who we are feeling like, oh, maybe the reason we actually voted for Ruto was because of Ruto. True. But Rigadi is the one who is there to watch over, who can understand um, the interests of the Kikuyu community. And I want to talk to members of parliament who have been elected. It doesn't matter how you got elected. You now have to figure out how you're going to help Rigadi Gashagwa become relevant, become strong. Because if he does that, then he's going to protect you, even within your own local community. I want to talk to the people from our community who are in government, wherever you are. If you are not a Kenya Kwanza person before, I know you are a bit concerned. I would urge you to find your way to Rigadi and figure and tell him, look, I was not on your side, but now I am on your side. It is important for us as a community to succeed so that the country succeeds. It is not possible for Kenya to succeed and the Kikuyus fail. It is also not possible for the Kikuyus to succeed and the country fails. We are tied up together. Our success is tied up together like this. So as I think about where we are going, I want to ask every person from our region to consider very, very seriously what role they're going to play in ensuring that Rigadi Gashagwa succeeds. And I also want to speak to Rigadi myself. I also want to ask him to embrace every person from our community. And this is where I bring in the issue of Uhuru Kenyatta. I know the differences between Uhuru Kenyatta and Rigadi Gashagwa are very deep and very personal. But for Rigadi Gashagwa to actually become the regional kingpin of our region, he has to protect the interests of every member of our region. If there is any possibility that Uhuru Kenyatta is being harassed by this government, it is Rigadi Gashagwa's responsibility to protect him. 
because change, things change. Uhuru was the most powerful Kikuyu seven months ago. Today, Rigadi is the most powerful Kikuyu in this government. Five years to come, I don't know what will happen. Let us form a president that it doesn't matter what happens. The person who takes over our, our community, and this, by the way, applies for everybody. Yeah? I mean, I'll talk to the lawyers, I'll talk to the people from the coast, I would say the same thing about the Somalis. And the people who have taught us, by the way, are the Somali community. They protect their own, they take care of their own, they never take their fights outside. And their fights are vicious, I can tell you, I know that. But you never hear them fighting, fighting their own. Right now, you don't hear a single Kalenjin attacking the Moi family. We as Ekikuyus need to sit down. We have issues that are internal to us as Ekikuyus. Let us deal with them internally. That is why I'm urging uh, a leader at this moment who is Rikadi to find it in his heart, to find a way to accommodate Uhuru Kenyatta and ensure that he is not harassed by this government. That is going to earn him a lot more support in places he doesn't have it than the support he's going to lose for taking that decision. For the rest of us, we, let's make a decision. I have made a decision, and by the way, people keep saying I'm looking for work. First and foremost, everybody wakes up to look for work. If you're a mechanic, you wake up to look for work for uh, a car that needs to be repaired. Come on, if you're like me, you wake up to look for clients. Yeah, mandazi na chai, hapa ruare. If you, any other job, any job you do, you wake up to look for work. So let's stop making it a joke that we're not after kazi. But let's also appreciate that the only work available, that government is not the only work available. The fact that I can speak my mind, and I'm speaking my mind, and I'm urging members from our community to realize that we are strong when we come together. And let me tell you why I'm supporting. I'm not just supporting Rigadi for the sake of it. Neither am I supporting him because he comes from Nyeri. I've been looking at what has been happening. First and foremost, I know we had the one man, one shilling, one vote mantra. Do you know it's actually starting to be implemented? Today, for every constituency that has more than four wards, you actually get an extra seven million shillings for every ward. That is a benefit to us. And that is something that has happened under this government, in which Rikadi Gashagwa is. Second thing, there was something called the Crop Act, which had closed down the coffee market so that only people who could raise a million dollars were allowed to trade in coffee. That has been removed. And now you can actually, as a coffee farmer in a factory, you can sell your coffee out of the country directly. This is good for us. It is happening under this Maudu Matato that you guys are working with. We also saw what he did with Yala, where he actually managed to mobilize members of the Mount Kenya community to work with other communities, and they passed a gentleman who's actually also a cousin of mine called Kanini Kega, to become a member of parliament for the Yala Assembly. This he did despite the fact that we know at a personal level they were at very, 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 uh, they were very far apart. But for the sake of the community and ensuring we have somebody representing us in Yala, Rigadi was able to make this decision. I expect that as the senior most Kikuyu in government today, Mount Kenya person in government today, he's going to provide political leadership. He has done that. I expect that he's going to give political protection. We see that happening with the people who have matatus in Nairobi, people who have small businesses in Nairobi. You get that feeling that nobody is going to push Kikuyu businesses around for as long as Rigadi Gashago is there. There was this narrative about Mtoto ya Mau Mau. And I always make fun how one of those days when he was climbing the mountain, he was seated with my dad, who you know is a retired Reverend Canon. And he told me, hey, yeah, this, this guy actually looks like a Mau Mau. He has owned that identity and he's pushing it. What does that identity do? It makes us remember who we are and the sacrifices we've done to form this country. He's also delivering on our own interests. He's taking care of our interests. So he's already shown that he can do it. And he's doing this without a joint purpose from everybody else. So this is what I'm asking for all of us. This is not about whether you like Rigadi Kashagwa or not. This is now, that has been passed by... Uh, events. We are now at a situation of the reality of our politics is that Rigadi Gashagwa is in the middle of it. He occupies the second most powerful seat in the country and he is only relevant because the Kikuyus and the Mount Kenya community embraces him. I assure you, it doesn't matter what you think, if Rigadi was to lose the support of the Mount Kenya community, he would most probably lose that seat. And if he lost that seat, then some of the things he is doing for us would stop being done. So why don't we do this? Let's support him. If there are things he's doing that we do not agree with, 
Let us find a way of getting that message to him. Tell him here mkubwa, we hapo unaweza badilisha kidogo. Let us find a way of putting our minds and our resources behind him. Let us build him up because then that is how he's going to become useful to us. This is my request for this week. And for those who say we are looking for work, tunaoza chai na mandazi hapa Rware. We hope you will come and visit us. We have very very, very nice nyama choma. We hope you'll come and visit. But beyond everything else, we have a country that we need to move on. And this country is made of multiple colors. And I come from one of those colors. And I want that color of mine to shine and be clean. And I won't, but I don't want it to run over others. So I want to finish this episode by saying, my pushing for the interests of the Kikuyu community or the Mount Kenya region in no way isolates other communities. I want every community to have people like myself who are pushing for the interests of that community. When I was in university, we were told politics is about the division of resources that are not enough. You go in there to get what you can to help the people who you represent. You go in there, hopefully not in war, but there is a push and a pull. So as a member of the community, I want to believe that coffee, tea, milk, um, horticulture, small businesses are going to be taken care of by this government, despite the fact that I didn't vote for it, because it's the only government I have. You're going to have people from Western who want the sugar cane taken care of. You're going to have people from the coast who want the, who want the blue economy to succeed. You're going to have people from the Northeastern who want development to be consolidated. Every one of these regions needs to put their best brains forward to take care of their interests. And as we push, our country is going to move forward. And we're actually going to become a second world or first world country. That is how we do it. Let's not pretend that we have one color. We're not one color. One, it will be boring, it will be dull. We are a court of many colors. Let's use it well. Thank you very much. <laughs>